always talking shit so yo what's good what's good it's your boy doc on it's your boy king magic back in tune with another episode of the always, always talking shit, shit show <laughs> Podcast. In the house. What's good, my guy? What's happening? How everything going? Melvin, what's happening, bro? Said they gotta have the trees teach black men crypto, huh? That's your folks, right? No, nah, that's somebody different. That's yeah, somebody different. Yeah, no, nah, I'm with it. Hey, we with all that. We yeah, can, I need we to can... get my crypto uh, wallet up to, to par anyway. So what you doing? Not much, man. I was watching this uh, documentary. See your music. Hey, you ever heard of Robert Lee Johnson? All right. So, man, Robert Lee Johnson. Ooh. I'm going to let you. What you want to do? What's, which one should I put in the blunt? I'm going to let you pick. Damn. <laughs> the same. These two are the same. Do this one then. All right. Damn. All right. What's up, bad. Mama Rose? How you doing? What's up? What's up? We'll try to deliver. Um, but yeah, no, I'm gonna get back to it. The uh, gentleman name is Robert Lee Johnson. Everyone, go check this brother out. He's a jazz legend. Um. So let me just break this down. Uh, and I left my notes. This is just something that I was uh, actually just curious about. I was reading, uh, I was watching a documentary on Netflix, and I just was just jotting some stuff down because I didn't know, I had never heard about him. Right. But, damn, I want to try one of those. That's what's up. I'm excited. Um, but when I, um, as I start watching a documentary, I start thinking about Pops. Because mine I was like, yours. mine. Okay. Well, you know what's funny? This is some weird shit to say, but like, you know what's funny? And I know it's unique because you, you didn't get a chance to meet my pops. Right. There's a certain type of dude that you think about when you think about that type of dude. Mm -hmm. And it's like, uh, there's a certain, I said what I said, you know what I mean? There's just a certain type of dude. So when you said that, I'm just like, man, this funny thing is, it made me think about my pops, but then it, when I started writing this down, I knew it was something I was going to speak to you about because it made me think about your pops. Just because of the music tip, how they both was in the music and then like the era in which they come from. You know what I'm saying? And Robert Lee Johnson is this legendary jazz musician. And just to show you like the cats that come, they, they say that come off of his tree is Muddy Waters, Little Richard, Louis Armstrong, and Chuck Berry. Uh, Keith Chuck. Richards, mm -hmm. Eric Chaplin, all mimic their styles after him. Eric Clapton. Did I say Chaplin? Mm -hmm. I always do that. Hold on. I always call that Will boy Chaplin. The first. Right here? No, the button. Yeah. Yeah. Just because you got to take that out. My bad, Joe. Right, we good. So, Robert Johnson um, is this dude. Now, this, this is where the tale gets, gets funky. So, the, the cat, like, is with all these legendary, like, you know, at the time for the area, you know, the music hadn't really went mainstream at all. So, at the time, it's this this guy with all these legendary um, are soon to be legendary uh, blues players, right? Mm -hmm. And they would go to like all these different juke joints. This is the time shortly after reconstruction and stuff like that. Um, it's a, it's a weird time because it's, it's not really um, depicted in accuracy a lot, especially when they start talking about our people and what we were doing at that time. Right. So you get this, they paint this image. the The documentary is dope um, because it's these new age documentaries that Netflix do is next level because they get real cinematography 
uh, cinematography. What's the word? Cinema. Cinematographic. Cinematic. 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 Thank mm-hmm. you. I know it was a yeah. Thank you. Mm-hmm. They get real cinematic. Um, different visuals. A lot of um, a lot of artistry and stuff like that. It, it's just it's just a, a dope documentary. But anyways, let me get on to the story. Robert Johnson, in the beginning, now he's an adult. Um, he's married, young, young adult, married. He loses, no, his wife because he plays uh, jazz, which is the devil's music, right? Mm-hmm. Kicked him out of the house. Moved up, like moved down south, something like that. Kicked him out of the house. Uh, took the kids, vanished. You know, he come back home, they gone. Never sees them or the kids again. Broke his heart, right? That was crazy. They, it literally, he wasn't cheating on her. He wasn't physically abusive. He wasn't lazy and didn't work. Devil's music. He just played the devil. He had a love for jazz that just, but this is the thing, though. At this time, he wasn't good. Okay. He wasn't good. Like, nobody pulled up on him like yo you know go hear Rob play Mm -hmm. they actually made fun of him and he was running out of like places to play because they were just like bro give it give it up he was that guy but everybody knew he loved it Mm -hmm. and some of the dudes some of the guys that was really good like felt bad for him because he put in the work right he just didn't have it well check this out bro he moves gets another job and I'm definitely uh, butchering the story, summarizing the story. But he, he moves and gets another job right. and meets a young gal, falls in love, right? A few years later, they get married. They have a child. Mm-hmm. And no, she's pregnant. And he promised her, you know, and he promised God that he never... He, you know, he won't play that devil's music no more, right? Well, she goes to see family, and in the midst of her going to visit family, while he was going to stay up and work, it gave him basically like a weekend at the house by itself. Right. She's pregnant. She ends up going to premature labor, right? He doesn't, you know, there ain't no cell phones or nothing like that back then. He don't get know. word, right. really. And then by the time he does get word, he gets down there, you know, a few days or so later. Her and the babies died. Jesus. And the family blamed him because he was out. They got word that he was out playing the devil's music. Because what happened was, you know, he got that itch and was like, you know, she ain't go, she gone. I could go play play a set real quick, right? Damn. Went and played a horrible set. Got no love, right? Family and dies in the room. lost his family. For the second time. Crazy, right? Yeah. Dog, they say he turns into a, just, he's drunk all the time for for a good few months. He's just loaded, right? Mm -hmm. Understandably. Right. You know, not playing nothing, you know, just, but carrying his guitar around, just loaded. And, you know, people, he became like a, a, people were like, you know, speculative of of him. Like, he was just kind of like a. You know, like a sideshow almost, like like a Robert man. You know, right. One day on a stormy night, he wanders into. This is the folklore. He wanders into a cemetery, to a cemetery. Drunk out of his mind, crying, distraught. Starts howling at the moon. And passes out. As he comes to, the devil is is in front of him, <laughs> and and they, the the legend goes Robert Johnson just hands him his guitar, and telekinetically he tells him, "When I return this to you, you're gonna be that guy. Your soul is mine. Uh, Do you want your guitar back?" And he put his hands out. Dog, he goes back to town <laughs> and is the greatest guitar player guy. ever. Right. 
to this. No, 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 no. Like Jimmy Hendrix, all these guys will give it to him. He goes back to town, and Robert Lee Johnson is the baddest man to ever pick up a guitar. <laughs> He's simply doing things with a guitar. And they said the problem was like one of the, like some of the teachers, like people that tried to teach him and work with him, they said the thing was is like they said imagine like a, a NBA or defensive lineman's hands, like he has like these ab, these gigantic hands, and it was it was it was hard for him to string the guitar. Right, he was clumsy with it. But he comes back and he's playing in a way that no one to this day can do or no one before there's certain songs that it takes they said like two or three guitars to pull off to mim- right. like mimic them and, and, and mm-hmm. like tribute shows and stuff right because no one guitarist can hit all those strings like it's that nigga just yeah he's thumbing the shit out of that motherfucker like dog and it's it's crazy because <laughs> he's singing and saying like the way he's, and you hear it in his voice and it's just like bro so you know you ride with the, the story now they do the documentary, they do the investigation and stuff like that, and turns it out that night a groundskeeper found him. Brought him home. That groundskeeper was like the underground guru of guitars. Oh shit. <laughs> Boy just put, and, and taught him put him on real quick and, just, and he was you know Laced distraught he was distraught heartbroken he ain't have no drive to do nothing all he wanted to do was be the best guitar player ever right so he was just stringing this and like so the dude though, and the way they know this is they tracked down the guy and his or his son or grandson mm-hmm. you know grew up knowing the story, the story and was just like yeah no like that. I don't know about that whole devil thing but 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 it became a folklore and it just grew and that's what people thought for years. So like he kinda was they fucked with him. Right. But it was from afar. Like nigga, that nigga, that nigga know, sold his soul to, to the, the devil. devil. <laughs> can't nobody can't nobody play like that. <laughs> the hands is over it's crazy, here. right? And and you know, black people coming out of slavery, man, and then being indoctrinated by Christianity and the church and stuff like that and the way it wasn't you get we you know we had though our people had those issues we had those superstitions and different little beliefs that you know what I mean. So speaking of this is kind of a little segue. I had a I had a uh, I'm back playing a little game a little bit. You know what I'm saying? I was talking to and Ro- uh, Robert Lee Johnson's just to show you where how far he took it. His music was played um, over a recording because three months before he eventually died, he was killed mm-hmm. because he was sleeping with everybody's wives and. This dude killed him over sleeping with his wife. Hands. He he was touched by the devil. Um, <laughs> Could you imagine what them hands did? Yeah, he, he was the same. <laughs> yeah, he he was a bad boy. My bad, I mean, leave. but uh, so he um, Robert Lee Johnson ends up getting <laughs> getting murdered at um, in 1938 at the uh, three fourth juke joint, right outside over a dispute with sleeping with this guy's wife. But three months after that, the people from Carnegie Hall was trying to track him down. Because they wanted him to perform there to right. get to to show the world what jazz really was, you know what I'm saying? And so instead, he was so dope and so revered that they still had the live concert and just played his record on a um on like a whatever they was playing it on back then. Mm-hmm. First time and only time ever. My bad. I just wanted to wrap it up so we don't gotta go back to it. Anymore. Rest in peace, Robert Lee Johnson. So I'm in the game, right? One of the dudes in there, I know he's um he's a homosexual. Today I found out he was black. Okay. So I'm like, cool, right, let me have a conversation with you since you represent both sides of this fight. Oh, okay, I see where you're going. I asked him, I'm like, all right, so how do you feel about like the LGBTQ community trying to equate their struggle with the black struggle. He said, "Let me tell." You, he said, "Well, let me tell you like this." He's like, "At the end of the day, so I can fake not being gay." He said, "I can't fake the skin color." He said, "So the the." That's what my sister said. He said, "So the fight is is com- is completely like different. Like one's what you do in your bedroom, right? One's the skin <laughs> you were born with, right?" So I was like, bro, that's the realest shit I've ever, but that's a real take on it. I'm like, yeah. that's a real ass take, bro. And uh, 
So yeah. like, how do you feel about the whole thing with the Dave Chappelle? And he's like, he's like, it's like I don't really don't know. He's like, but like the cancel part of it is ridiculous. And he didn't even is, but I was like, that's, that's crazy. Hmm. You know what? But it's just a good perspective because this person is both sides. All right. See, you said cancel culture, or you said cancel, cancel and it makes me think about cancel cancel culture, and when I would hear cancel culture, because of the people that the term was introduced to me by, Mm -hmm. I have my biases. I'm talking about, I'm hearing like niggas like, you know, and I guess I'll hit him with an RIP because he passed away, but like Rush Limbaugh and... Mm -hmm. Sean Hannity and shit like that. Like, so I'm like, man, eh, let's hear some like racist white coding or some Republican coding of you don't want to be canceled for doing racist shit. Mm-hmm. That's my projection, right? That might even be my insecurity, but it's honest. That was my honest thought. I sit here today and be like, oh, this cancel culture shit is ridiculous. Cause I'm always been one that like, if you work at Fox or for Nike and you get caught doing some racist shit, mm-hmm. I don't think that they should have to fire you, right? But I think that you and Nike should get whatever comes with that. Right. Now, Nike's probably going to fire you because of that. But they're not obligated to. But I think it's fu- kind of fucked up that when they do. And it's fake. It, it ain't like you care about the color people that are offended so much that you're appalled and offended. You know what I mean? Right. It's like with the cap thing. It's like they they ran the numbers. It was like, yo, actually, this shit makes sense. The Nike, all the Nike, all the Nike heads out there, like fuck with cap. Mm-hmm. The people that might have Nike in their closet, yeah, they probably burn it and throw it away. But we don't care. We're gonna they're not buying billions. They're not, yeah, they're not. They're, we're not up a couple they, they, uh, they, up they billions of dollars off them overnight. Too. That was an right. overnight shift, nigga. They did the numbers and right. were like, nigga, if we mm-hmm. don't sign this nigga, we're stupid. We was, had to re-sign him. Yeah, I mean, yeah, if we don't re-sign this and nigga. And they got creative. Like, he don't even do nothing. Uh-huh. Technically. Like, athletic. Contractually. So. He does look good at his little workout. Man, Cap is, if you know Cap, football Cap ready. is going to die looking good. He's that type of dude anyway. He's just a workout warrior. Shit, I'll take him off the bench. I don't like squad. Captured a minute in the league, fam. And it's a few teams that if they really just gave him a chance, mm-hmm. they'd be the heroes. But to the people and not to their colleagues, yep. it's gonna be real little lonely at the motherfucking clubhouse, nigga. Uh, at the golf, at the you know, at the country club, nigga. You don't want to motherfucking let let the motherfucker back in the league. That's that, a, that's if you- to them that's a some symbolic defeat. You know what I mean? That's if you because if a motherfucker gonna sign cap, that's a motherfucker who don't even care. But you can't. That's just, they're real care. That's why it's so hard to <laughs> own an NFL team. Right. When they say that, oh, they're gonna vet the ownership group. That's what they vetting. Who who you vote for? Right. Yeah. Exactly. What's your politics, fam? Come on this yacht with us for a couple of days. Black coach, white coach. Come to this dinner. <laughs> I'll see you over here at the uh, races. Let's go on this hunting trip. This is all part of their vetting. A, a, a group of owners and shit, like you know what I'm saying, and it's really they're gonna be asking you certain questions, and you're like, what you know, you know what you think about this? How do you business. think about that Colin Kaepernick fella? Love him, you know what I'm saying? And that's when they're gonna hit you. Are they gonna do you like Floyd and or like they did Floyd and Oprah and them? Mm-hmm. Oh, y'all got the money? The price just doubled, tripled. You know what I'm saying? Because we can keep going up to where y'all, even the richest Negroes well, in this country, could can't get afford together it. and afford it. Right? This. We can just keep going up. So. That's one of them things. And then the way the, like, bylaws are, like, you're talking about generation. It's, it's designed to be passed on to your children. Yep. So it's not really designed for you to, like, lose the team. You got to do something egregious to lose the team. You don't even got to perform well. You got to be on camera. Call about hey, fam, the, the Browns owners is the same owners from when niggas was wearing those brown bags on their head. Yep. Same, same owners. owners, too. I'm just saying, yeah. like, so I don't know. It, it's tricky. I, I'm a diehard Cap supporter, nigga. Like, I struggle watching the NFL because of what they did to Cap. 
How do you but feel I'm biased. about speaking? Let's keep it on sports. How do you feel about LeBron stands right now, LeBron. and how they're trying to blame the team and really not put none of it on him? Who LeBron? On LeBron? LeBron stands. LeBron going. We know LeBron takes acknowledgement for the shortcomings. We know. I'm not going to say that about him. Right. Whoa. But you got everybody like, oh, Vogel needs to be fired. And he, yeah, he did. But he took him, the, nigga. No, 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 Took no, him no. to a championship. No, 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 no. He did, no, he did not. I'm not saying. No, no. I'm not saying he did it. Okay, what so I'm that's so you don't get. He was the so coach. Up, but Let's say. The, uh, but when you're the owner and GM, and you know he didn't do it. Yeah, he personally they didn't hired do it. I'm not going to sit here and say Vogel. He got the was job the because they knew anybody that year was going to get the championship as the coach. Let's say that. Right. It, that team, it was in the books. Not saying it was fixed. But it was destiny for them. They but had the like team. This, they had the defense. They had like it. This, you feel me? Not only, but a lot of coaches would have did would have looked more impressive winning it. Fam. Okay, I'll give you that. I have basketball knowledge, but I'm not a pro. Right. And I don't kid myself. Right. But if I if I can watch a game and see you being out coached, mm -hmm. fam. So could Rob Palinka. Do you feel like like you know what I mean? So could so could LeBron James, and when the the teammate when the team is texting during half times when y'all got a twelve point lead, twenty point lead, and then y'all lose that lead, that looks terrible. When the when the owners is like, "Yo, Russ ain't playing good. I don't care how we paying him forty million. If you need to bench him, you got full control over that. But you don't want to put your nuts on the table and tell this player." That hey, I'm gonna I'm gonna bring you off the bench because you're not vibing with these two and you're killing us. Do you feel like that's the coach? That's all coach. Okay. Do you feel like Westbrook? Okay, let's say this. Do you feel like Westbrook is a bad player, or just a terrible fit? Well, okay. Let me stay consistent because anybody that knows me that sees me saying this mm -hmm. will be on my ass. Pause. I'm not a Russell Westbrook fan. I've been telling people since UCLA coming out of UCLA that Russell Westbrook of... was a stat stuffer. Right, that I feel was, the same way. That was a, a uber athlete, and for some reason, he's either uncoachable or he's not being coached. Well, you can't wait until I check myself. I feel like it's more uncoachable. You can't wait until I. It could be both. You can't wait until I check myself in. Right. To being a fucking first ballot, undisputed Hall of Famer. To start trying to tell me to slow the ball up. Right. Or now to want to take the ball out of my hands. Right. And if that's what you want to do, we need to have that conversation before the season before started. The season starts, right. It's leadership. Okay. See. Okay, well, so no, 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 now that you put it no, that no, way, I see it is Vogel. Frank Vogel had Jason Kidd and them sitting behind him. And they won a championship when they like that, yep. But when you look, go back and watch that footage. It was Kid. It was Kid in, in, in Anthony Davis's ear. It was Kid that would challenge a LeBron James. But in fairness. It, where, where's Kid at? It, Milwaukee, right? No. Look what he, he got Dallas from being a play-in yeah. team to a nigga like the third seed or yeah. some shit like that. Nigga with the same squad. It probably would have took L.A. to a championship this year. Back-to-back. Because he would have been the nigga. You're right. Because he'd have been the nigga in Westbrook here. Like no, you either gonna sit on this Westbrook, bench, fuck Westbrook, or you gonna Westbrook fucking take Westbrook out of it. <laughs> it's a it's a it's a way that you got to deal with Westbrook. But take Westbrook out of it. But you're right though. The best thing that can happen to a, a Russell Westbrook <laughs> is that he played for a top five point guard yep. ever. Yep. Because you can't tell Jason Kidd nothing. Nothing. You can't snarl at him and be like, nigga. Because that nigga going to pull up. Because he, he can pull up highlights. He can pull up stats. Like, nigga, what? And it's like. I did this. And it's like, nigga, you're chasing my. My stats. Tri triple double records. Like, you, and, like you're chasing. And, you're, it's, you're doing, it, and it's on one of them levels. Like, nigga, I'm not just. I'm not the coach who didn't play, nigga. That's what I'm, I'm getting. I'm the coach who played see, at on. a fucking superstar So when you're level, a coach, nigga. When you're a coach that didn't Champion. play. When you're a coach. Because I'm not even going to haul him out like that. Because guess who would have benched his ass? And got him right. Jeff Van Gundy, and he no, didn't no, play. No, what I'm saying is, you know, some players won't have respect no, but, for but, the coach. No, but because, hear what I'm saying. But you're going to respect some coaches, saying. period. You're right. Because they demand you're it, right. nigga. Exactly. I'm the motherfucking Pop, coach. You ain't going to tell Papa damn I'm thing. I'm the motherfucking <laughs> coach. I'm the coach, <laughs> you, fam. You ain't going to tell Papa bitch Hey, check shit. this out. Carl all either. You, George Carl, you wouldn't tell him nothing. All you niggas got all these long-ass contracts, nigga. They not getting rid of you. You make $40 <laughs> million. I'm the nigga that they going to fire if we fucking don't make the playoffs. And I got... Pat fucking, Riley. I got eight Hall of Famers on my team. Pat Riley played, though, and won. Oh, yeah, yeah, you're right. He was a champion. Phil played. Nigga, yeah. the reason why yeah, Phil could won. coach Mike is because Phil could look at Mike yeah. like, nigga, I'm a, I am won, nigga. Yeah. I got rings, nigga. Yeah. You're right. You you're want right. these rings? You're nigga? right. 
you're right. Run this triangle. Like you you not a I was forget we're talking good ball about coaches and decision who aren't maker players. Right now. Yeah, but nigga, but, yeah, a pop nigga. Tell please tell pop something. You gonna sit your ass right on that bench, and it's and a get difference. traded. Fucking with and him. It's a difference. Look, all coaches played, but there's levels. Right, right. You know right. what I'm saying. There's coaches that didn't play at a high level physically, mm-hmm. but you could if you're the greatest player, you can hear them, see them, and see what they, they and be they like. Oh, this before. motherfucker gets it. Yep. Like he knows he gonna put me in the best positions. There's coaches out there that never played that can teach Kobe Bryant something every day. Who's the best coach right now? Ever. That's a tough one, right? Because there's some bangers in there. Because even Pop, without having as many as Phil in them, Pop is nigga. I mean, he got just shit. all around. He got like six or five. Yeah, shit. Just all around is a fucking hell of a coach, bro. Pop is top three coaches. Is coaches every player now, to see, their this best, I'm gonna say. nigga. Has coached this every player say. to their best. Just off record and what we have to go off of, right? Um, You got your Pops. And the reason why I will put Pop over a Phil Jackson, even though Phil Jackson is arguably the greatest coach of all time mm-hmm. all on paper, yeah, is because Phil never – I've seen Phil coach with subpar talent. Right. And he wasn't special. Right. And we've seen that nigga. I've seen Pop, Pop nigga, even this year and last year, nigga, do superb coaching jobs where it's like – Y'all going to beat them probably, mm-hmm. but it's gonna, it's not it's not a, a, a easy game. Like, we can say this, Pop spent more time in the playoffs than he has out. I think you can say that about a lot of the great coaches. Because some of this shit is predicated with coaching. Yeah. It's hard to go off that shit because some of, the, some of it is predicated on talent. So, you, so sometimes you can only be as good True. as a coach as your True. GM. Right. You know what I'm saying? But see, like, take football, for you're instance. Talented, you're you're Same thing scout. with football, but you got some football coaches, right, that can see a guy that's third, fourth string, or practice player, and be like, yo, if we get that nigga the ball with NFL talent around him, I think he could do something. Right. And we see that every once in a while, and that's a hell of a coaching job. It's like that in basketball, too, man. It's just like so much could be covered up by a star player or two. So what happens is, is like when Frank Vogel has like a star Spolstra. When, when you're, no, when your star players are exactly, but when your star players are healthy, Spolstra is like, oh well, man, you start thinking about the good things he do. Like, well, he's a good, he's always been a good defensive coach, and LeBron likes him, and you know, yeah, good for him. He's a good coach. Yeah, like, well, he shocked the world. He got a championship. Nigga, look who he had. But hold on, right? Because they know you got to have talent <laughs> to win. So they don't knock. That's you That's another team so you no, give so anybody they don't, that but they don't, team. But they don't knock win. you for the talent, right? Because you got to have talent to win. But you get credit for that. But the next year, when your stars are hurt, and you got capable talent, like I don't give a fuck what nobody said. The fact that you didn't start Lamelo, right? Or Melo at all, really, nigga, down the stretch. <laughs> or the fact that you didn't like use him in ways of like just scoring. Like yo, Melo, when you get in the game. I need you going for this. You just come in the game and go for buckets. You talking about Mano Ginobili? No, I'm talking about nigga Carmelo Anthony. Oh, because you're saying nigga, Lamelo. My bad. That's I, why I, I'm no, like, that's wait, why I corrected the first time when I said <laughs> Melo. My bad. But like, yeah. So like, when you think about things like that, when I'm when I'm thinking about um, what's the uh, other young boy on the team? That's nice. Uh, it's just a couple of players. I know. Yeah, they had Monk. injuries. Monk. Yeah. You never featured Monk. Nope. He always did everything he did in spite of. Yep. The other white dude that was The white dude who just killed it yeah. with a triple-double the last game like of that. the like, year. It, like, I can argue that uh, that, ever, that Tyron Lou or Mark Fox or Jason Kidd would have got more would've out of those seen players. Him. Yep, would have seen They would have empowered those players, and they would have known how to blend in the young players with the old. Yep. When you got the old players and you're trying to have them run up and down the court the whole game – and and not playing the young players in, until fourth quarter spot minutes here and there. Yeah. Nah, man, you you rely on the youth. Yep. And let the old folk, the old niggas, close the game out. Yep. And they offense should have been more free flowing. That's all coaching. Because because the, they gave uh, up more, great in the They clutch, gave up nigga, more period. twenty point leads than anybody in the league. That's coaching. Yeah. Like you know what I'm saying? Like stuff. It was just too many. You're known as a defensive coach. Y'all got nigga one of the worst defenses in the league. That's 21, coaching. One, yeah, twenty first in the league in defense. Can we say also that you fucking waited until, the, until y'all was in the playoff, out of the playoff race, to to stop playing a detrimental player in the fourth quarter. If 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 I'm LeBron and I see you gonna keep playing this nigga and he throwing the ball over the backboard in the fourth quarter, but we got this undrafted player nigga that. 
is got a high plus minus nigga open hits all his open shots and don't turn the ball over. Hey, that's a I need a coach. Yeah. LeBron can't do it all. I feel like A D is soft, man. I mean not soft, just I think injury that, prone. No, I see this is the thing. I think AD, AD is highly scrutinized now because he plays with LeBron. Because before Le, he signed with the Lakers, they were injury pro did. No, but fuck all that. They also were saying that if you had any player right now to start a franchise with, It'd be Le, yeah, it, it was, was it was Anthony Davis. Yeah. It was LeBron for hella years, and then, and then it finally it was Anthony Davis. Yeah. So now the next year he goes and wins a fucking championship, and now he oh we got to trade him. Oh he's soft. Oh he's this. He's that. That's just overreaction. Because just but like no, you I've said, always felt this way. Look I at feel the, what you're saying. Look, dude, look at the injuries that he's had. See the reason why I don't call him injury prone is because I know the history. I know a kid that was 6'4", signed with the University of Kentucky as a shooting guard, right. and when he got to the University of Kentucky, he was 6'9 and a quarter. I know what happens to a kid's body when you grow that fast, that much in a short time frame. You're going to have back spasms. You're going to have fucking ne- lingering injuries. They're not real injuries. <coughs> They're just shit that like, nigga. They're nagging injuries. And when I'm paying you $33 million, nigga, mm-hmm. sit down. The trainer said you're having back spasms. Sit down. You know who is soft? There, hold on. There's 82 games. Yeah. Sit your ass down. Hey, and I got you presumably for your whole career. You know who is soft, though? So, don't, hold that thought. When he gets to L.A., he goes through wins the championship, long-ass season, and get a bubble, all that type of shit. They try to devalue long it now. Long-ass, weird-ass They try season. to devalue it now, but that was the hardest championship to ever That's win. The so, great. then he comes back this year. He gets hurt because he's playing hurt. Because he starts listening to motherfuckers like Charles Barkley and them that know damn well if they was hurt, they wouldn't play. Right. But they, they get paid to talk. Yeah, because Scott so everybody's, his ass down. Everybody's in the motherfucking field. Everybody's talking. Nigga. Jordan's missed a whole year before. Yeah. They, so they're talking and shit. Everybody talking. Oh, you got to play. Oh, man, I'm calling them street clothes. Because there's really jealousy because it's like, nigga, I was a great player too and I made a fraction of what you're making. You're making $44 million this year. Play her. I'm so sick of that shit too. Because that's, that's not natural. That's not. But that's not that. The, I know. The, I know. You were. I, well, I agree nobody with you. was demanding that money I back then. You. you niggas should have demanded it the way they well, demand no. that shit now. You only like, pay. You only work what they'll pay you. Uh, right. So I understand that, and I, to a degree, I think they understand that too. But when you give me a mic and you paying me millions of dollars to talk, and I'm an Emmy award winning show, yeah. right? And I get basically a, a pass for clowning players, right? That's what I'm gonna do. KP is but now, nigga for but when sure I'm young, me. and I'm like, nigga, I'm hearing that, and I'm like, nigga, I ain't soft. I'm from Chicago, nigga. Like, I ain't soft. Like, well, shit. All right, well, fuck it. Maybe I should. These are the greats. These are the OGs saying it. Am I letting LeBron down? Maybe I should go out there and play a little bit. I can run a little bit. And now he over. So now you go out there, the and then you look at the himself. two injuries he got. Bro, I'm like, nigga, I don't care who you are. One of them, nigga, is LeBron's fault. It ain't LeBron's fault, but it's technically LeBron's fault because LeBron, nigga, is playing physical with a nigga and pushes him mm-hmm. and pushes him right into motherfucking AD's knee. Nigga, AD oh, yeah, ain't looking. I that. That's the first injury. Yeah. Then he comes back, and I forgot who it was, but nigga, they just run and nigga and slip and fall and take that nigga's leg out when he ain't looking. Nigga, I'm, I'm, that ain't his fault. You know what's crazy? I'm mad at Marcus Smart for that shit right now. Right, I mean, doing that shit to Curry. That it, that it, right. He didn't do it on purpose. But, but that's just that, one of the like, things God damn, bro. that it happens. No, it's surprising that that shit don't happen more. Right, but it happens every once in a while, and it's just like fuck. Like it ain't really nothing you can do. But what I will tell you, and basketball minds will tell you, if your if your connectivity ain't right, mm. if you got a bum leg, you can't. And this comes with age. When LeBron can play hurt. Because he knows how he's playing with ninety percent of the game from his shoulders up now. Right, right. He ain't relying on his athleticism no more. AD still is just gonna run past you, nigga. Jump higher than you, nigga. You know, be quicker, be more agile. Be he fit, still more plays physical. more physical and athletic. So when he's not a hundred percent right, and you go out there and die for that loose ball, a veteran would be like, nigga, they way the odds. It's like a running back that learns to get down. Mm. And a receiver that's savvy that knows how to get down. I know you want to take my head off, but I'm not going to give you that opportunity. You You're never going to get ground. a chance yeah. to hit me clean. Yeah. Nigga. Like, they, you have to learn that. Yeah. And sometimes you have to learn that by being hurt a couple times because you still have that invincibility. You're talking about 20 some year old young men with six packs, nigga. That's all over six. six. I'm going to take that soft tag away from uh, AD. I'm going to go ahead and shift that to Kawhi.
Quite a softest to me. Hold on, fam. <laughs> Let's take a moment of silence. Dwayne. Kawhi is the softest nigga in the league. Oh, yeah, for sure. And I've been saying that for years, and niggas <laughs> killed me. Soft. But I just was looking at some shit. He like, didn't Damn. even play this year, did niggas he? Niggas trying to compare his nigga to LeBron and them and Kobe and say, they no. were saying he was better than Kobe a couple years ago. Never. And I'm like, bro, this nigga's career high is 45. Right. Now, I know it's, I'm not saying I can just go in the league and drop 45. I go for at least 15. I'm just saying. But I, but 45, I get it. But nigga, don't, you don't get to talk LeBron, Kobe, Jordan talk, nigga, and that's your career high. Right. Nigga, LeBron is out here old as fuck that's throwing up 40 point Averaging games. Averaging 30 a season for the season. Throwing up 40 year. point games. Couple 50 points pieces. Nigga, nigga. brought Tom Brady out of retirement with right. a 50 point game. Right. <laughs> like, niggas ain't looking at Kawhi. Kawhi's soft, nigga. And Kawhi should retire. Nobody else should give Kawhi any type of max deal. You should, He should get leaked minimum, What What bro. Stephen A. Smith be saying about Kyrie? About how he's <laughs> he's distrustful? And if and he's like, I'm not saying he's not a max player. I'm not saying he don't deserve his money. I would pay him at forty million dollars a year on one year contracts, because Ky, cause he's like, cause Kawhi, Kawhi, uh, Kyrie would just leave. Ky, uh, Kyrie would watch the news and be mad at some political shit and decide he ain't playing. He was like, I just don't trust it, and he's injury prone. But I get why you would say that injured. about Kyrie. It seems like it's something personal between Stephen A. Smith and Kyrie, mm -hmm. but. I'm like, fam, that's really what niggas should be saying about Kawhi Leonard. Yeah, because Kyrie plays if he's not injured. He's in the lineup. Kawhi Leonard played, is a gym Only reason he played half the season this year is because he was injured for a little bit, and on top of no, that, they want, weren't letting him play a home game. Fam, I'm telling you right now. And, and yeah, the, like, the, the jab. He didn't want to get the jab. So let's talk about, but, like. But, but in fairness to Kyrie. And every game you saw him in uniform. I'm not the biggest nigga Kyrie was fan. Stupid, nigga. But even though I know Kyrie is that dude, yeah. I'm not talking on court. He just uh, sometimes comes off as a little aloof. But I fuck with Kyrie, though. I really do. Kyrie, so I, I found out I take Kyrie's that back. not even. F I'm not the biggest fan. He's not even FBA like that. No, he's extremely FBA. Is he? Because isn't his birth certificate Australian? He was, they was born in Australia. That's just cause his he, dad was a That's because your dad played basketball. Yeah, I, like, but he's. Uh, hey, Kyrie, apologize. No, nah, but my that FBA nigga's tribal brother. and everything. Like, that's why he be wearing, he be wearing the feather shit. That's why he don't want to get the Pope. That's where all that. My yeah. bad, my FBA. Yeah, brother, actually, I apologize. I forgot your he dad. He went back wasn't and found his tribe and all player, that. Did yeah. everything. He be putting money up and all that. Yeah, he do his thing. But um, that's why I didn't see the nigga with Sage in the gym, nigga, where he got hurt at last yeah. time. Like, yeah, Kyrie's dope. So what I'm saying is, I, I want to walk. I walk Kawhi back ain't. Kyrie. Ky, Kyrie. I like Kyrie. I Kyrie like is a hooper's hooper. Mm -hmm. Like if he can hoop, he's gonna hoop. Right. Kawhi Leonard. He's Iverson in that way. Kawhi Leonard is he's Kobe, Iverson, LeBron, yeah. all them niggas, niggas all the playing greats. through them injuries, bro. Don't give up. Like you, he really got to be. It's over for the season. Nigga. Kyrie like, likes playing basketball. Right. When you get to like Kawhi, I've always noticed that like once he got paid and got that championship. Like, I could just see, like, he missed games for all the felonious reasons. And it's the reason why Pop was just gave up on him. Like, you know what, man, go. Because, I'm not giving him and no type of they deal, said it bro. in San it's Antonio. Over. They was like, yeah, we love him, man. He's a good kid. You know, he works hard. But if he has a thigh contusion, which every basketball player halfway through the season has. Right. Somebody didn't, didn't need you in a fucking thigh. Nigga, nigga, like, turf toe. But he won't play. Turf toe is different. Because – Turf toes, it can lead to other injuries on your foot because you can't plant properly. So that's why it becomes dangerous, and that's why they play you with it sparingly. Okay. So you see niggas in the playoffs with that shit, they ain't playing this game. Yeah, because that the next takes game. away your whole, you can't, you jab on that. Ah. Once, <laughs> once you start feeling that pain in it, yeah. you got to sit down and rehab mm -hmm. it until you're not feeling pain, and it goes and comes until it don't come back no more. Right. Unless you just sit it down. So like that's only why it's I like be, that dude you were telling sounds me sounds like hella soft. It's but like it that ain't dude really. you were telling me overseas had that foot problem. Yeah, thought it was eh, kept playing on it, yeah, and it was over. It's like over. yeah, it's just done for you. Turf know, we, do the same shit. Our bodies ain't made you. for this shit. No matter how much we train it for, mm -hmm. right? And so when you get a guy like Kawhi, I'm looking at him. I'm looking at the physical specimen he is. But they were saying that it's mental, it's lack of mental toughness, right? And it's lack of like physical toughness in the right. sense that like he has a stance and it's kind of I'm going to take that back it's not lack of mental toughness it's just not traditional mm -hmm. because it's a to me it's mental for, it's intestinal fortitude to be like 
I know y'all paying me thirty eight million. But I'm not playing. I know everybody depending on me. I know all the team, all the guys is like, bro, we need you. I know everybody's like, but you know what? And I know the trainers are like, yo, he can go. He's not injured. But I, my foot hurt. I ain't playing. What would you do in this position? If I was him? In high school for free. You I let a coach. The same shit. I let a coach. <laughs> no, 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 stop. In high school for free. I let a coach talk me into getting a shot in my ankle when my ankle was the size of a grapefruit to play in a spring game. Nay, I went there to the doctors and crutches, walked to the car, nigga, on my own, got dropped off at the gym, stretched, warmed up, nigga, played in that game, and literally was like, the next day, where the fuck is my crutches at? Because that shit had worn off. I admire. Now, I don't know if I would risk that to be as a million dollars. You have more people around you, your commodity, you get more tutelage. You've been more protected. So I admire the, the fact that he just like, yo, bro, I, I know what y'all, all that Hooper shit. He's in the NBA. You're around a whole bunch of Hoopers. You're on niggas that are making a fraction of what you're making on the team, and they playing every game, they in every practice. They got to be there. Nigga, Kawhi show up late. Uh, the, He don't live in Los Angeles. Right. So, nigga, they got to wait for his motherfucking helicopter. Yeah, he land. lives hella far, in right? San Diego. They got to wait for his helicopter to land. He fleeced the team because he was that the nigga's hot. a whole no, diva, he, nigga. Yeah, he was the hot guy at the moment because it, it was the media jumped on it. They've been trying to replace LeBron forever, and it was like, oh, he got LeBron like because even though LeBron didn't play it, that was the first year he had missed the playoffs. Right. Um, he had just got to L.A. with Lonzo on them, and he got hurt. That was the first year he had got hurt mm -hmm. towards uh, quad, and they was jumping on that because he beat the beat up Warriors. Everybody got hurt. Damn near. Not taking nothing away from it. That's the game. The the, the then he he got Toronto over the hump. He gets all the credit for that because mm -hmm. he's the newcomer right. and he was a star max player. All right. Even though he's not the sole reason why they won. But niggas don't want to talk about how he stepped on stepped on the out of bounds line on that three to get to the nah, fucking championship. It shouldn't even been there. <laughs> Shit crazy, right? How it that all happens. Stepped on all types of out. How of it all bounds. happens, bro. And then so like then it was like oh shit Kawhi could be the first guy to go three for three get, get three championships in three different franchises that ended up being LeBron to do it yeah but oh he's gonna come to L A and dethrone LeBron like no, he's, he's gonna not. come to, he has his him nigga, and, it's him and Paul George this nigga don't even play enough games this nigga so now think about this if you Paul George you just tore your shoulder nigga you worked your way to come back nigga, nigga you broke you your bro leg years ago had snapped one, your had, shit like had this. one of the your most gruesome was... like leg injuries in recent years in the basketball <laughs> like, come right on. a viral nigga a you moment. Still out here hooping every right. chance you get. Now you still going. Here's what now, pisses hold on, hold on. me off. You got, you got motherfuckers like Brandon Roy. No, I'm saying you got who Reggie literally Jackson. Literally can't play hold basketball on. anymore because of his knees. You got Re you got Re you got you got right you now. got cats, cats like Reggie Jackson, yep. who damn near was out of the league. You got motherfucking that, that was on prove it to me contracts. You got the Isaiah the, the Thomas brothers. Like you got all these people on your squad. Right. No, Isaiah Thomas ain't there. He's on the Hornets now. Yeah. You got all these people on your squad, right? You got you got all these people that's that's riding like, okay, you getting the big bucks, nigga. We we missing and and, and being late for takeoff, nigga, and sitting on a on a tarmac for extra yeah, hours you. waiting for you. You don't got to come to practice under under the. the well, I don't know. Tyron Lue changed that, but now he hurt, so it don't matter. But nigga, the first year he didn't have to come to practice. Did he even play this year? No. <laughs> I'm done. And. By all accounts, they showed him working out, nigga. They said that he's healthy, he's healed. He's gotten the clear to play. He's scared. He ain't cleared himself to play. He's he don't scared. know if he's coming back. Now, peep this. If they make it into the playoffs, they're in a the playing tournament, they make it to the playoffs, right? And he's like, oh, shit. LeBron and AD out. Le uh, the Nets don't got their big three. Uh, the Warriors, niggas, Mr. Katie. No, but Warriors will be a hundred percent. Well, they're gonna get that, but you still like you still facing Steph Curry coming off an of injury, versus them rolling into the, you know what I'm saying? Shit, so they were looking decent. Not, I know, right? That, so no, I'm saying. So you looking at all you that? Got but, a Suns team. Hold on, but you still Kawhi and looking at the Clippers like nigga. Hold on, you don't fear these people. <laughs> Kawhi is a champion three times. Mm -hmm. Two Until time NBA final. No, no, it's, not, it's different. Warriors no, or... it's different. Two times NBA finals. So no, I'm not like, saying his mentality so, changes. So exactly. Saying. So I'm speaking to his mentality. Yeah. He's looking at he might now what if he decides, Oh, I'm I'm good. I'm ready. And pops back up and they go on a run and win it. Uh, to me, that would be so Kawhi Leonard. 
and the way his luck works out and like the way his skill meets his preparation, he'd fuck around and go and they'd fuck around going to run and win it. And they'd be praising that nigga as Jordan say, again and all that oh shit. He's God. the man. He's this. He's that. And then the next year, nigga, he'll have like a jammed toe or something and miss 40 games. I hope he don't win another And so the question I get, because I don't want to just rag on my brother, but what, what I, the, the question I'll be asking is like, does Kawhi, is he a, a talented jersey wearer? And I told you to tell about my coach once that told me about jersey wearer. He is a very talented like, jersey Like you 6'8", I feel, chiseled, I feel that. jump out the gym, claw hands. You know, he definitely has work Great ethic defense. because you made yourself a better offensive player, but you're known for your defense, which has, you know, suffered in recent years. But, oh, well, you're still cool. You're the claw. You got these endorsements now. You're the man. You ain't been suffering. You and, just ain't even played and enough you get, to and make you getting up this for bad bread, games. And you're getting all this bread, and it's like, man, I know I'm set forever. My legacy is intact because I won a chip, and I was kind of like the anti-LeBron for these cats that, that just hate him. So I had that moment. And now it's just like people don't even talk about him in that vein no more, and they act like they never said it. So he gets the pass. It ain't like he's LeBron or KD and he fell off this way. They'd be killing them. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? Oh, LeBron's healthy. He can play. He's scared. Oh, KD can play. He's scared. They'd be killing them. You know what I'm saying? And then I'm looking at the way he went out in the playoffs. You didn't ball. Nope. You know what I'm saying? You kind of choked it up. So then it's just like, damn. They bring it in a new stadium. They build a new stadium around y'all. You're getting all this money. You just signed a new max extension. Where are they kick- building the stadium at? At the old Coliseum. Oh, okay. And then you uh, are the old forum or whatever. Mm-hmm. Then you um, then you, you know you, you got the new extension max deal. I'd be look wondering that if you it's didn't like deserve. I'd be wondering if it's just like, but based on the way the game is set up, he did. Right. That's the way it works, right? It's like the quarterback that gets drafted after the clean ass quarterback that breaks the record for rookie deals. Well, nigga, I'm about to get, I'm about to break the record for rookie deal now. Right. I don't care if I ain't as good as him. It's just like the NFL and the receivers right now. Everybody's yeah. breaking the record, right? They setting the market, mm-hmm. right? So, are resetting the market? Yeah. So you take that element of it, and it's just like, okay, he's just in like a great poker position. Like, I'm looked at as one of the top five players, so you have to pay me and treat me as that. You have to deal with my BS because the Clippers owner was just a billionaire throwing money around. He didn't really listen to basketball people. So you put a lot of money into these guys that kind of have spotty, like, reputations when it comes to, like, being the guy. Right. Paul George and um, Kawhi, right? You got these young guns on the team. They doing all the heavy lifting. You got a hell of a coach. But Kawhi just chilling. I don't know, bro. I don't know. Kawhi's not that young. Mm -hmm. If I'm Kawhi, I don't want to play no more. I'm thinking about retiring. My body hurts. I got a little injuries, right? I got a fragile body per the medical staff. Fragile. They say, right? Which is odd because how chiseled he is. Mm-hmm. But he does, right? He, he's hit injury prone. Well, he might be like, uh, he might be on a jet one day flying back from a meeting. Like, I just secured this bag. I'm a net worth a couple hundred mil. Just off my likeness, branding alone, I can – kind of keep patting that over the years mm-hmm. without playing. I could just chill. I might I'm thinking about retirement, right? Right. And then you get the facts thing of that like the Clippers is like, yeah man, we know you're injured. Um we know we didn't get it done, but there's a max. We got a new stadium. We need you here. Here's the max. Damn near two years early. That's an extra couple hundred million dollars you weren't even anticipating. All right, well, my, my now shit. Now you've sat out for one whole season. All right, my shit still hurt. Because mm-hmm. you really might not even want to hoop, fam. Right. And b- sports, that's a hard thing to make yourself do. To go run and chase a nigga with a ball in his hand. Nah, because I feel that because at production takes a lot for me to just be like, all right, I'm going to spend all day producing beats. And that's the talent. That's my talent. You know what I'm saying? So I get it. Now. Give you four hundred million dollars. It would it would might get a little harder. Excuse me. But there's a little bit of a difference. I'm not gonna fake injury and be fake injury and shit. You don't have that out. Niggas ain't gonna book me for tours, and uh, you know I ain't gonna fake injury a tour. 
you don't have that out. Right. I, you're absolutely right. I don't. I got to do all this shit to keep making my money. You can't tell me I'm on back pill. Yeah. I might have some new shit. <laughs> when it comes to medical shit, I'm like for real. Right. Fuck you mean the doctor don't know what's wrong with me. Oh, I'm going to go find a doctor, doctor that do. Mm. What does Kawhi do? Oh, he left. He's in New York with his own doctors. Excuse me. Come back to all these. Because those are the motherfuckers, excuse me, that you paid to be like, yeah, nigga, something wrong with him. Mm-hmm. It's like a lawyer and a defense attorney. Oh, your expert said he did what? Hold on real quick. We got an expert that said that that's impossible. Right. <laughs> Y'all both experts. Mm-hmm. That just wipes you guys out. He might be telling the truth. But if it's off theory, off professional th- theory, I can go get a, a counter argument to that theory. What do you mean? You said my client's not born gay? And you're a professional psychiatrist that specializes in uh, hetero and homosexual behaviors and studies? Okay, hold on. Because I'll go get the nigga with the same study, same degree, but he's religious. Mm. Right. So he don't believe that you could be born that way. And he's going to hypothesize that. Now, nigga, the motherfucking cat, taxi driver, the hairstylist, the barbershop, and the high school football coaches and the jury is just like, well, that's a that's a dub. Mm. It's the same thing in these in this situation. Shit, give me a second, man. Motherfucking hiccups, one nigga. Yeah, man. I, well, I drank that drink. Went down the wrong tube. Pause. Big pause. Ain't nothing went down down me. You feel me? No, I'm playing. Let's see what else we got. Uh, what you think about that Cambosis Haney fight? Did that happen? No, it's coming up. Oh, uh, I was like, fuck, I missed it. No, the Errol Spence fight is first. That's this week. This weekend. Is yes, week. sir. Errol Spence about to whoop you guys. Um, who are we talking about? Haney about to whoop that boy. Only thing that scares me is, is in Australia. Let me talk about something real quick. I don't feel like it's going to go to distance. Let me talk about something real quick, though. Mm-hmm. Go ahead. I do not like Ryan Davis. Is that his name? I don't know. Not Ryan Davis. Ryan, um, or Golden Boy Productions. Social media dude. Oh, Ryan Garcia. I do not like. I hate. He don't. Like, nigga, you're a social media guy. We had this conversation. You're really a social media guy, and you pop up and fight who you want to fight. They find you, you keep, some bum. And you keep talking shit Tell about. Tell the last and duty fight. Yeah, you keep talking shit about who's ducking you and doing all this shit when we know you really don't want to fight Davis. You don't want to fight Crawford, and you don't want to fight Spence. All three of these niggas will, wipe, will beat your motherfucking ass. And the reason Golden Boy isn't getting you these fights and telling you that it's just basically Oscar De La Hoya telling this motherfucker, hey, these motherfuckers ducking you, bro. I keep sending these dudes fight offers and they're not. No. Nah. Oscar's called him out before. Okay. Because you're supposed to fight Haney. You're supposed to fight uh, Javante. And Haney will beat your ass. He ducked all of them. But this is the thing, I think Canvosis might get with you. You can't sleep on Ryan even though he's annoying because when they was in the amateurs, and he, he's he's 50-50 with both, with all, with both of them. Him and Sha- I think him and Shakur went two and two. Him and Haney went like one and one or something like that. And him and Javante Davis went like one and one or two and two. But I think these niggas is whooping him now, though. Yeah, because they've gotten more repetition. They've been in the bigger fights. He's but been I fighting think, cupcakes. But I think that's what's going to make the difference now. That's yeah. what I'm saying. Yeah, you did the one and ones. But I think now with the professional records and, and who we fought and didn't fight and who you didn't fight. He fell out with Ryan, He fell out with Oscar De La Hoya. Because he, he wasn't he fighting nobody, right? He fell out with Canelo. Canelo said he, Canelo said he don't want to work hard. That makes sense. I definitely can see that. That could just mean that he didn't want to take them shots. But he left that group. 
Shane Mosley. Like five out of here. nine. Yeah, that nigga's probably looking, looking nice. nice. Yeah. For sure. Shout out to Shane Mosley Jr. He was looking nice. Mm-hmm. But hanging Cambosis. I don't feel like it's going the distance. I feel like Haney and Tim. A, he made him sign a two fight deal and fight him in Australia. I feel like Haney and Ten both fights. He gonna have all them nice belts. Right back in America. And then I sets him up with a super first super fight with Davis. Thing is, the way it looks now, contractually, he ain't gonna get to fight Davis for another two years. After these two fights. Oh, because of the fights he's going to have. Oh, yes, he's got to give Cambosa's automatic second fight. And to get the fight, he had to sign uh, with uh, Bob Aaron for two years. Mm. Not two fights. Two years, 2024. That's four fights. You tell you, they do about four, two fights a year if you're Well, big. it depends. If I only got you for two years contractually and you're a star boxer, I might have your ass fighting every six months. That's twice a year. Yeah, you That's right. four fights. <laughs> yeah, you said that. <laughs> UFC is where they can do three months. UFC yeah. fighters can do three fights a year, four fights a year. I don't see how because the niggas' gloves is way smaller. Them knockouts be brutal as fuck sometimes. Like, you see niggas go to sleep in boxing, but niggas really almost all the time when niggas go to sleep in motherfucking MMA, that's cause a lot it's of, them feet out and... Yeah, that's because... but. When you're talking boxing, you're talking about professional punchers mm-hmm. and professional punch takers. Mm-hmm. You're not a, UFC's not that. It's not that yet. You ain't got there yet. Connor shows you that because look mm-hmm. how he was doing cats in the UFC and how he got standing dead. up and <laughs> dog. Everybody that that went out the window. That little wisdom. All those <laughs> big gloves. And Floyd was power punching, and walking that nigga down like he was Tyson. So, but nah, I feel like. Um, Who's um okay? So who's under Aram? If so, we can see who Haney's gonna be putting these belts up after he gets them. A bunch of Europeans. Mm-hmm. Aram ain't gonna do the right thing to have him fighting his fighters, and he's not gonna give him a chance to. He's not gonna make it easy for him to leave him with all those belts. All right. So who's gonna fight? After him both, as you think. Mm. Probably, um, what's up, boy, that uh, tank just fought not too long ago? Not uh, Pitbull, but, um, not him. The one before that. Tall dude. Mexican dude, he's tall, though. I can't think of his name. Yeah. Probably him. Or somebody we don't know. I don't think Lomachenko's going to come in right off of war and want to fight Tank. No, I'm or Devin Haney. Haney. No, nah, because what I'm saying He's is... they are going to fight a warm-up fight, like a tune-up fight or something. But I'm saying... Nah, but that that's puts him right in line for Haney. Haney's got two fights he has to do with Cambosis mandatory. So what he does is he takes two... two Lomachenko takes two tune-up fights... Waits for the two Haney fights. Nigga, you line them up for a nice clash, nigga. Well, Matenko's at war. He's still back? No, he's not. You're right. He is at war. He went back. You six about to fight. Mm. Who is he fighting, though? He's fighting Joshua again, right? Because he's supposed to fight. What's his name? What's his name? I uh, had to. Oh, no, I keep killing your candy. Who? Oh. Um, you six. The heavyweight champion. Uh, Josh. Yeah, he has to fight Joshua, Joshua again because he was gonna fight what's his name, but Dylan White ain't gonna let mm-hmm. Fury fight him before he gets his fight because he know Fury's leaving after this. And they tried to do him on his dirty on his money. Because mm-hmm. they'd have to pay him like twenty something million to step aside. Yeah, I know he'd have been like, "Word, where you want me to stand at? <laughs> side, this side." Over here in the rafters. Oh. <laughs> I'll be at the hotel. You only man. watch from at home. Like, yeah. I can watch from the crib. Because like. that boxing shit is crazy, but I didn't realize this until I was watching this Floyd thing. Pay you to they, stand aside. No, they bring you the check before you even get your, your clothes off, nigga. Like, 
Mm-hmm. Well, he came in there and was like, oh, here's your payday. Here's a check. I got to do this. Line. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. You still got your finger your, pen, your what you call this. Before well, you that motherfucker. Your, he was, like, you ever, he was like, y'all ever seen a $150 million check? I was like, damn. And man. them checks look different from any type of payroll check or anything. It's got way different itemized places mm-hmm. and shit. <laughs> She'll say $75 million for this, up, $10 million up, for this, different size $31 too. million for this. <laughs> It's a different size paper too. Look it is. That. that shit is like, nigga. You imagine taking to the to the bank. It's your first one too. That's the bitch. Your bank is like, uh, hey Jim. Hey, I feel like that's where they rob you at, Jim. On that first lump sum. This. Like, I just read some shit where Giannis had his all his money, in like over sixty banks. Cause you have to banks no, only. No, keep this no. Uh, well, his owner found out about that because it got out to the public. Uh-huh. Because that's what the bank, the local branch bank tellers and them had this nigga doing. Oh, they did him like a low, like a low budget millionaire. Would because that's what no, they do they, a low no, budget they, millionaire because they, they can like only a regular Joe instead of a nigga that's in one of the highest t- tax brackets. But in that's the world. what I mean, low budget millionaire. Yeah, so like what, one of us, if we have a million dollars, they're gonna make us put it in ten accounts because they can only insure up to one hundred twenty-five grand. Well, no, yeah, you, that's that's, that's what they did to, to this nigga. But, no, but like on some silly shit, <laughs> way too many accounts. You're not supposed to do that. No, without. you give him. Uh, so you, the you owner give him like thirteen accounts overseas with one card. No, his, they the have owner, them big ass. The owner of the uh, the, of team, the other team the and stepped in and yeah. heard and was embarrassed by that shit because as he should have been and um, helped him. Yep. Get a get the right type of accounts and then um, also you, also helped him uh, start investing. In his you've money. seen blow. That's that real shit. He's like, nigga, I gave you $31 million. I get this little book. That little book is real. That's a that's a debit card for them fucking $100 million, $300, $400 million accounts, nigga. Yeah. <laughs> that's a book none of us, that's nothing we get, nigga. We don't see that. We ain't seen that yet. Yeah, no. Anytime they, they ask you for your fingerprint before they give you the check. Yeah, nigga, that's You talking big money, boy. A lot of zeros. Nigga. A lot of zeros. But no, I was thinking that, man, like, uh, the Cambosis fight, to me, is going to be tricky because it's in Australia. Like I said, he's not going to win the decision. Who? Haney, Haney would have to landslide this I know, he's going to have to go in there and beat his ass. He would have to knock him out down in every round. He's going to have to do have a, his Floyd Mayweather moment. Yep. His Earl Spence moment. Yep. Where I'm coming across the water. And beat your ass. And I'm going to whoop your ass, take your belts, and again, I'm out. You're taking them all. FBA. You know? So we'll see. They're down. And Tiafimo went up a fucking level, right? That's what I heard. Yeah, he went up a level. Because he dropped all remaining belts after Cambosis. He had, like, something left over, and he dropped them to Cambosis. Yeah, he probably can't make the weight like that. He probably struggles making that weight, cutting that weight down. Cambosis put hands on that boy. Yeah, man. There's a lot of money made on that fight and a lot of money lost. Or hey, that was a good upset. Who you think's gonna uh Spence, you guys? Oh, Spence is about to get in that ass. Pause. Spence Spence about to go. Didn't to work. Crawford just sign for a fight? Uh he's pending signing uh with the PBC so he can get the Spence fight. Which is what they've been telling him to do for fucking ten years. Nigga. Canelo like scared years. all of them. Uh, Canelo has a problem. I will tell you right now, seeing Spence right now, I bet Canelo and hearing him Cambosis. and hearing him say that he only has one more fight at at that weight. Like I'm like, okay, I could see it because he looks huge, dog. Mm-hmm. He looks, and he's had that long time to recover and just train, bro. That nigga look like a beast. I was watching his he live. Like Mayweather, after yeah. That I was watching. His, I was watching his live workout, and I'm like. Cause that Damn. nigga Mayweather against uh, Mark was it Marquez that after first retirement that boy came back, <laughs> nigga yeah. he was so nigga yoked pause. He came back and whooped that nigga's ass. Beat that nigga the fuck up. <laughs> yeah, and Marquez is good. Yeah, Marquez is a beast. His ass. only Marquez's only losses are to fucking Pacquiao and Mayweather. Well, he's a Hall of Famer. I know that. Yeah, I don't remember his record. I checked this 50 out. 50-something uh, in like 50-something f- in four or some shit. Ooh, yeah. Great record, bro. I know uh, Canelo's had like 60 fights. And I was telling people like he had 40-something fights. He was 40. 
He had 40-something fights, like 44 fights when he fought Floyd. That's what got him to fight with Floyd. That's what when I be telling people, and, you know, people saying that he could beat Floyd, and Floyd was just like, man, book the fight. Let me whoop this nigga real quick. And the thing is, is I'm like, I don't want to hear that he was green shit. Yeah, oh, my God, that shit's like, annoying. You did, you, anytime anytime you do, you're do, you a professional and you do something 40 times, like, they don't even barely be calling nigga NBA players rookies nigga after the 40th game. They be like, nigga. Yeah, you you ain't no rookie no more, nigga. Shit, it's half the halfway mark yeah. after the All Star break and shit. They be like, nigga, stop doing that rookie shit. So that's just something that just came to my mind about that. I'm listening to the pod, um, the Joe Button pod, and they're talking about something race related, right? Um, <clears throat> it was they, it got jokey, and and basically, I I don't want to don't. I'm not going verbatim, but they was joking around, and I think it was either uh, Joe Button and Ish or Joe Button and Ice was like, shit, man, because that's talking about staying on a, you know, cold, right, on some FBA type shit, but then they was just like, yeah, man, but like, they what they do is they get motherfuckers like, they ain't on cold, like 500 mil, right, and so uh, Joe was like, yeah, one day we're going to come here and talk about it again. And keep it real about who taking that five hundred million. You know, just joking around, everybody laughing, right? Taking like, five hundred million for what? To just sell, like, to be a light hearted, like a little sellout. Oh, sell your people to not be. Oh yeah, no, that's what it was. To to say that you're not black. Oh, five hundred million. It was five hundred mil to be like they be like you know. There's like, a Dre, lot of this, shit. You take this five hundred mil, Dre, and when you get this five hundred mil, nigga, don't you let these people call you black no more. There's a lot of shit. They was talking about Tiger with the Kavla Nation shit. That's what they was. Like I said, there's a lot of shit that I'm gonna consider for five hundred million. No, no, and no. do wait till we get for five hundred million. Wait till we get but there. But nigga, please. Wait till we get there. No. Hey. Wait till we get there. What they? Let me give it more detail in more context. Tiger Woods got damn near a billion dollar contract with Nike, mm. and they were saying like we're building golf around you. We don't make golf shit. We're building our golf, whole golf shit, Around the brand, you. off you. Right. So there's going to be some things you're going to do. You need to get married. You need to do this. You need to do that. You need to hold yourself to this accountable. We don't want to see no tattoo. We don't want to do this. You know, just certain things that they do, right? Um, They were alluding to, like, that's where he got the capitalization from. Like, yeah, stop, stop letting these people call you black. Like, you know what I'm saying? Like, and it was just lighthearted joking. And I think one of them was just like, I mean, I'm never, nigga, you never have paid me to do that. And he was just like, see, some of us got to stop lying about that shit. I'm You're not. talking about six, seven hundred million dollars to, to, to when they ask you about your heritage to be like, oh, well, actually, I call myself, um, I'm not just Asian and black. I call myself Kavla Nation because I have some Caucasian. I have some, you know, you just do some weird shit like that or some off, off kilter shit, right? You my nigga. No, listen to me. They're saying that, like, Nike's telling you this upon signing you to this big deal, right? It's just them joking around. I'm getting to a point. Mm. Two black dudes that are educated and doing very well for themselves. Right. I was like, shit. Nigga, you can look at me and tell I'm black. Give my money. I don't need to communicate. Nigga's jokey right now. Nigga's just joking, right? So they go around the room. How much would it cost, nigga? How much would it, would, nigga, would it cost you to all the black dudes in the room, which is majority black dudes in the room? But then, nigga, because Parks is family and he part of the tribe, like, they're like, yo, nigga, like, Parks, we ain't excluding you, nigga. Like, how much is it going to cost you? To stop saying you're white? To lose your whiteness in today's society. My nigga Parks said the most profound shit ever. I would never put a dollar amount on that. Right. Silence. Because a joking moment just got real in all honesty. Parks wasn't trying to make it all serious. Parks wasn't trying to die. And it takes you back to that Chris Rock joke where he was just like, right now there's a poor white man in this room laughing at my jokes with, with one me. leg. That if he had one chance to live, change my life, change his life to be me, live his life, 
he wouldn't do it. No, nope. he'd be like, "No, nah, I'm gonna just ride this white thing right on out." Like, I'm gonna just... yeah. And Parks is a very woke and respectfully woke. I'm, I'm saying in a good way, right? Um, very sincere and sensible person, and he represents himself that on on their on their podcast every every episode. And he, you know, there's logic there. He seems to get be on the right side of things, even if the people discussed or don't look like him, mm-hmm. right? So when he said that, you instantly don't take it as like some racist shit, like or some like arrogant, ignorant, like you know, you're trying to be the asshole. You know, he was just being honest, and like they were all laughing, and then it just got quiet, and then that nigga Joe was like. God damn, that's crazy. Like, that's D. He's like, nigga, you see this shit? He was like, nigga, this nigga don't even, you can't buy this nigga car, this nigga white car for 800, 900 million, right? And they all started laughing again. And it was just like one of those moments that, like, is profound to me. It's a teachable moment, but we don't got to stress on it. Like, you know what I mean? It is what it is. I just thought, it was funny too, though. That's real, bro. You know what I mean? Because like, it was just like, up damn. That white privilege? I'm like damn, are just the assurances of knowing that cops right won't shoot aren't out kill looking you. to kill me. Right, like imagine the president and the attorney general doing a, a issuing a report and statement saying that there is a criminal fraction that's matriculating in police departments and law enforcement fields all around the country that hates. Blonde hair and blue eyed people. Oh, yeah. Or that hates dogs. And they're going to do everything they can to kill every dog they can. I mean, it's just certain things when you, like, isolate the hate in certain ways. That's when it gets tricky because it's like, damn, nobody else is bothered by that. Right. You know what I mean? Like, would you give up, would you denounce your blackness for half a B? When you say that, what do you mean? Denounce it? Like, just say when we're if doing this. Motherfuckers re- ask you if you black, you do the Tiger Woods thing and say some crazy shit or whatever. Oh, see, I'm gonna get my shit off way colder than Tiger. I'm just saying. Are no, you I'm doing right that? Now, let me. I'm gonna ask you a question. First off, when they ask me, I'm gonna be like, Nah, I'm Aboriginal. I'm gonna hit them with some like woke type shit like that. I ain't gonna hit them with the like no. Nah, but you I'm... can't use no woke shit. You can't say I'm FBA. I'm Aboriginal. I'm none. You can't. You you, you nigga. Yeah, I'm like no. Nah, I'm brown. <laughs> Go get a brown crayon and put it next to my skin color. That's what I'm gonna tell you. You can't. All right, half a billion. And then lastly, half a. If bi- I can't do that, I'm cooning. I'm a coon and go out like a bitch for like. For the I'm gonna sacrificially go out like a bitch for the for the tribe, bro. Y'all all gonna be lit. Even I might even have to bow out from the pod because they're gonna be like, man, get that coon ass nigga out of here. And you gonna have to come on and be like, Yeah, I got that coon ass nigga up out of here. But secretly I'm sitting right over there, nigga, and we up. <laughs> like, you cooning, huh? You in here shining like a motherfucker. You're like, man, don't trip nah, King ain't buy me this. <laughs> like, nah, King. Hey, why y'all studio is palatial like that, nigga? Is that a butler, nigga? Where, where are you at, nigga? Like, oh, you know, uh, ATS Studios. You know, we had a little small upgrade. How you got a whole network now? <laughs> right. Hey, look, with thirty million uh views and followers, like we pay for all that. All of it. How you <laughs> think it's the best thing on Spotify now? Hey, man. But no, in all honesty, I, I like to think no. I couldn't. It's like I don't get to go to the barbecue no more. I don't get to rap no more. I don't get to produce music the way I want to produce music no more. Yeah. I ain't doing it. You know what I'm saying? I don't get to come on here and talk about my, my FBA pro black shit anymore. I lose, we lose the whole podcast. I mean, we can start podcasting some coonery shit, but I I just I can't go down that path. Mm. Nigga, donkey of the day Speaking every other day. What's up with your boy Gilly and Wiz, nigga? Gilly got his shit back though. The original one. Yep, I just saw him today. I think it was Wiz fans that did that. Yeah. Wiz shouldn't be on there in his goddamn drawers like that. No way. Wiz is in a mo a multi dojo. 
with the heat up to 102. All right, let me let me rephrase. Let me rephrase. Let me rephrase. Do what you do. Wear what you're gonna wear. Get the backlash. You can get the backlash out. We now, can't talk if about he it. He ain't. If he ain't the. I'm not saying that. I'm not. I'm not gonna talk about it. Like no, 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 no. Would, get what I'm saying. Oh, maybe. Remember when I was talking to you on the phone off 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 the joint about the shit that happened with Wack. Mm-hmm. Bro, when a certain type of man makes a comment towards another man, mm-hmm. no matter what that man's preference is or whatever, right. if it's perceived that it's going after a certain community, yeah, you you're right. out of here. You're right. You're out of here. You're right. And that's Wiz. Mega star. Yeah. So, like, I don't even know. Like, most the Gram, view, the Gram could have had they, they bots vi- listening. He's got the most viewed video on YouTube. They could, the, 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 the uh, the gram could have had they bots, All right? Because even Wack was I like, just don't th- Wack th- said when they shut him down over at Clubhouse, yeah. he said it wasn't they didn't shut him down. It's they have people when you got a popping ass room, they go they have there. people that go in and listen. And what they heard, even though they heard, they listen to it without a context. Like you know, fuck that. This is some. He said the f word. He said this. Like you know what I mean. They're, they're, they're bullying It shouldn't man. have went that far Regardless Gilly shouldn't have lost His fucking page Over whatever the fuck he said No but when you have All those You just said When My you have all those a, Type of fans Yeah And you got those Little suburban Annoying With all the time In the world mm-hmm. And they don't like Gilly for what he's saying About that guy mm-hmm. Fuck you man He's such a dick Like oh Let's get his page turned took it and like yeah. now you got they go report now like you got a hundred and thirty three thousand people reporting videos all at once yeah. and it's a, it's a systematic thing and now them niggas had yeah it, it had shut, to shut the shit down, down. they yeah. had to shut it down that's why when uh, Wiz hit him he was like bro like I ain't have nothing to do with that let me like I can help you get it back because he knew mm-hmm. that it was his fans that probably did that shit like nigga like, watch how you talk to me on the internet nigga I'm popping talk to me nice nigga talk to me nice my nigga. It's like you can't just get on this joint right now, nigga. This thing called the wide world internet and start talking crazy about Beyonce. Hell no, I would never. Fam, are you nuts? I would never. We don't say that. We would never be a, a podcast. We, we don't about do none of that. Shit. Podcast, bro. They be ruining people's lives. Right. <laughs> they find out who you are, who you're cheating mm. with, nigga. All that type. They get to you know, bitch. You don't even pay your taxes, nigga. Shut up, like. They be going deep, nigga. The Beehive is like an investigative fucking journalist, nigga, with a gripe, nigga. Not playing with the Beehive. They like anonymous for Beyonce. Real talk. (laughs) She said Becky with the good hair, nigga, in 48 hours, they had a person. Yeah. The bitch had to come out and make a statement. I have never slept with Jay-Z. Like, nigga, like, I'm not Becky, nigga. (laughs) Like... Leave me alone. Nigga, was, she had to leave the internet, nigga. And she work in the industry. Like, she probably has to be on Twitter and shit like that. Like, she had to put her shit. It's like, I had to delete my page for a minute. Nigga, I got millions of hate. Like, niggas just hitting me with millions of hate messages. This is like, try to fight her in public, nigga. Yeah, bro, it's like, that's scary. Yeah. Y'all know what I look like? I don't know what none of y'all look like. Just run up and start whooping me one day. Come on, fam. Hey man, speaking of, hold on, yo boy. All right, let me stop. Stop saying. Let me stop. Let me stop. Fuck it, I own this one. My boy. Six nine got nine million hits on the worst audio clip ever for music ever. Now, I don't know how the song going to sound. Now, you know the song? I don't know. Is I've heard singing? clips. No, nah, I've heard clips where it'd be like, man, that's, that's, that shit don't sound all like that. And everybody be in the studio going crazy. And then when the song come out, I'll be like, oh, this shit is fire. They mix and master it and everything, yeah. I get, that's how I knew that, that easy shit was about to be hard because I heard them niggas doing it in the studio. Yeah. And he replayed it, and I was like, nigga, this shit sound like I'm at a concert. Right. Yeah, it's this just shit, all about how you mix and yeah, master. Yeah, this shit was mixed great. Cause I'm like, nigga, this shit sound like I'm in the room with you niggas. Like, and this is coming through somebody's phone mm-hmm. in the studio. So, I don't know. That shit sounded like hot garbage, bro. I'm not going to lie. But we'll see. We'll see. Um, the curious case of Danny Hernandez continues. All right. Guess where he's shooting the video at? New York. Right in the middle of Brooklyn. Talking and shit. 
I mean, he good. Ain't nobody gonna run up. We've seen it. Streets is done. Ain't nobody gonna run up. And it's just like the more I think about it, I don't even. I don't want. You'd be the ultimate crash dummy anyway. if you did that. Yeah. You don't know this nigga. You don't know them niggas. Yeah, for what now? At this he point? said he was on the phone a couple times with Shotty's son. Right. Like, if Shotty's son ain't did nothing crazy, but that's how fans be, bro. With a little little Dirk fan or a little King Von fan. You feel me? They don't oh. just be in Chicago. What's his name, bro? Uh, little Timmy? Nah, it's this other rapper. Let me see if I wrote it down on here. Uh, I'm still going to tell the story. It's this, it's a young rapper, bro. Let me see. He literally is out with his friends and his brother or whatever, right? Mm -hmm. Another rapper, they got a little rap clip. You know how these young boys do. So, um, he out doing his thing. They out kicking it or whatever. Some of the, like, opposition come see him, you know, out doing their thing. Pull up on him, spray up the car. Two of them out of, like, six people in the car survive. One of them goes off to pop a little bit. I can't think of his name. But he's a little young rapper. Mm. Um, he's doing his little thing or whatever. And then, to fast forward a couple months, police ain't really helping with the family. Dad had recently got out of prison. Oh, is it the video you sent me? Yeah. Okay. No, no, I know what you're talking about. Go ahead. Um, and to summarize it all up, pretty much, like I'm paraphrasing. The dad, after going back and forth with the police, dad the, the dad, after sending the police numerous clippings of videos, songs of these kids from the other side of the other town. His killing his two sons. Bragging about killing his sons. Like, not just talking about it. Because if you did that, that would be your story to tell, too. Yeah, bragging. But bragging. Mm -hmm. You know. Smoking his pack. Smoking uh, they pack and all types of shit. Yeah. Said you need to hit the dispensary yeah. and go get uh, this pack. And so, when you think about that. Come on, bro. Um, the dad said, you know, they keep treating us like we're a gang. They even reporting it to the news. He's telling the reporter, like, they're giving you guys feedback like this is a gang fight. Mm -hmm. So now the, the the one that's more the successful rapper one. The son that lived. Right. No, the successful rapper one died, didn't he? One of them. And then the, the brother got the, killed. Right. The other the one got hit in the head. Was the son in the that, hospital. that lived. Yeah. Dad was in the hospital, got hit in the back twice. twice. Yeah. The son that lived. He's taking off a little bit musically. Mm he -hmm. gotta live on. Pops is like, okay. Now dad got. So he was a shooting before that. Mm -hmm. And then that's when dad was like, okay, nigga, they healthy, they doing good. He trying to steer them the right way. You don't wanna make no mistakes I made, man. Let that shit go. Take them to the show. They perform. He performed. Good crowd. Shot at again. He really realized, like, damn, my son's gonna make it. He's doing good. He's telling them as they're driving away from the show mm -hmm. how proud he is of them. How you know it's, this time it's the son, yep. his other son, I think his other son. Yeah, like his all nephew. three sons and the nephew. Yep, car rolls up. Car, young boys come through there and spray him up. I say that to say this. He then, after going back and forth with the police, and the police not really taking or heeding his like warnings or treating him like he's just like a criminal that's, you know, bound to retaliate and do all this stuff. He eventually retaliated. Him and his son. Um, according to the, the report is they approached the assailant, shot him in the head, took off running. Um, the other mutual rapper involved in this from the other side of the tracks, I guess. I heard him talking about it once on Vlad, 
And I remember thinking like, damn, that's a horrible story, yo. These young kids got it bad out here. And then to find out it was not just a young kid, it was the son. And the dad. And the dad. Like, I need my get back. The son is charged with two first degree murders, and I think the dad was like charged with accessory after the fact or something like that. Um, but they're both in, in, in custody in Florida. I just, you're, you're a father, so I wanted to bring that to you. What do you think? Fuck with any of my kids like that, nigga. I'm he was in the out. car when he I'm killed not his just, baby. I'm not shooting just you. I'm shooting your parents. I'm going, I'm sorry that I got to bring other kids in this. I'm shooting your children. I'm going on some straight. You should have never done that shit. I'm trying to wipe your family out now because you pretty much did that. Just what you did to me. You damn near wiped my family out. You wiped my fucking bloodline out pretty much. Because now me and my son, if my son didn't have kids, the one who me and just killed everybody with, my bloodline died. Right. My, my last name died essentially in that car that day. So, so is yours. So yeah, I applaud that man. I applaud that that young man. I wonder how it was gonna work out. They're gonna go to prison for the rest of their life. <laughs> Damn. They are. Sad thing to say. So was it a that's the only time mission? that's the only time we ever get justice is when it's black on black crime. Was it a successful mission? Yep. Absolutely. That's what I said. If you got who you wanted to get, mission accomplished. Street justice as we call it. Man. Cops, you get your little chance to do justice, but there is definitely a thing called that street court of law. They show a row, a row of songs that they make dedicated, just to dedicated to kid, talking. Man. Yeah, yeah, you, you, and then that's what you do. I gotta get you, bro. I got to. I gotta go to jail for that, and I'm gonna stand on it. Yeah, yeah. I don't think I'll be in there doing a hard time. Yeah, I'm gonna get in a shootout with police. You gonna kill me? No, I don't mean like that. I mean like oh, I'll I'd be, just be in there chilling. Yeah. Oh yeah, yeah, hell yeah. Or I know what I do. Enjoyed every second of doing it too. <laughs> I did it and had no regrets after. No. Stood over and no. shot this nigga with the cater. That's a fact. And felt no type of way. Loved every watch. Watch love. I loved watching the the life leave this little nigga's body. That's crazy, Fuck bro. Him, nigga. Like, Straight up. I see the other kids' parents. Like you know, I'm thinking like, but damn, look what you know what your son did. Nigga, fuck your kid, nigga. Fuck you for raising that little bastard. You should have swallowed that nigga. Yeah, I would have to have that energy too. Sorry. Fuck you for raising them. You got a problem. You can get the. You lucky I didn't get to you before they came and got me, nigga. Cause y'all was next. That's what, exactly what I said. You lucky they got me before I got you. Cause I was coming for y'all next for raising this little motherfucker, bitch. Mm. I don't care what you got to say about me. Eat a dick, father. Fuck you, nigga. Eat a dick and die slowly. <laughs> Straight up, bro. I got kids, bro. Wolf is knock on wood. Koi, my nigga, what you doing? You was in the car, nigga. Sprayed up Koi, nigga. Killing the whole, everything. That's your dad's. That's your last name and your dad's last name. That's the last little part of the legacy. If you don't have a boy, and you try to knock that off, yeah. or you did knock that off, didn't try. You not, nigga. What are you doing? What you gonna do? And you ain't got no kids. So this is, this is you're a man who has no, pretty much nothing to lose, nigga. That's why I brung it to you. Like, bro, what would you do? Because I know me. <laughs> and that's the thing about the father. You got an adult age, damn near son, but all the babies is gone. Yeah. And your nephew. You took yeah. your brother's kid with you, your sister's kid with you, and yep. didn't bring him back. Yep. You got to look with at your that, sibling right. and be like, fam. I'm sorry that... This whole shit happened. I low key type probably argue with you to let him come. Yep. Right. Oh yeah, you got to go, fam. Yeah. Yeah, I don't want to hear no squealing and crying about it either. And you, like I said, you lucky I didn't get your family. You lucky I didn't end your bloodline mm, mm, like you mm. did mine, my nigga. You're lucky. 
You know what's crazy, bro? Is when I was looking at the story, it made me sick. But like, I never thought about the bloodline part. But that's why I had out. to. That's why I had to put McCoy you just hear into niggas it. Niggas rapping about that shit, bro. Yeah. But this nigga, they, this young boy. Yeah, at really, that, and then they rapping about killing Corey, my nigga. Like, I think it was ended up being fourteen different songs. Yeah. And he's a signed artist. We smoking Corey pack, nigga. <laughs> like, oh, bro. what you gonna do? Everybody gotta go. <laughs> Right, and if you get caught, they're gonna be right in that prison. Cool, like, hey, come visit me, come say hi, write me, call me, I'll call you. <laughs> like, come on, bro, fam. When I say everybody has to go, <laughs> I'm John working at home. I'm killing right. your dog, nigga. The dog. I'm being disrespectful, <laughs> nigga. Oh man, everything that nigga, everything gone. Like I said, kids, babies. I'm sorry, but that's who I am that day. You did the same to me. You killed my kids, my oh, babies. My I watched gosh. grow the fuck up. Bro, when he was telling the story about having to drive them to the hospital with two bullets in his back, yep. you were just talking to your kids. Everybody's dead about how dead. like to live the right way and see this works out, and yeah. now. All of them were just in there dying, fighting three for died. life. Three, two died, your nephew died, and one of them was fighting for his life. Gosh. Bro, when I say this story, like, literally took something out of me. Pause. When I, like, when I was, like, looking at it, that's why I sound like, bro, you got to watch this. I think I'm shooting. I'm, sh- I'm, I'm every, like you said, everybody's got to go to the dog. They're going to be like, it's fucked up what Keem did to that family. That type of story, right. nigga. When you go to prison, hey, what? Hey, don't play with him, nigga. What that nigga did, don't, I wouldn't, know. Nope. Like, spaz to the point where you damn near get nigga insanity looking ass. Yeah. Like, yo, this nigga's crazy. Yeah, don't play with him. What that nigga do? That nigga killed the nigga's whole family to the dog after they killed his sons. Don't play with him. Leave him, though. Bro, I felt so alone. bad for dude because I'm like, that's a horrible phone call to get, but you were in the car driving. Mm-hmm. Yeah, you didn't. Yeah, you witnessed it. One second you're having a conversation, next second you're shot. And that's the key shot. witness. Yeah, they're trying to they spin it an arrow from the jump, and he was just like, "Man, I'm trying to make it sound like it's my fault and this and this." And it's like, bro, that's nuts to me. Rest in peace to the young kings. Man, rest in peace. And motherfucking shout out to that senior king and his other son, the young king. Well, fuck you. Because you didn't do your fucking job. He gave you numerous times Man, to do up. your motherfucking jobs and not take it into his own hands. You didn't do shit, so that's what happens. I'm sorry. Did you hear about... The teacher that got tied up and raped out here. Oh shit! At El Dorado High School. You did briefly tell me about that, dog. So, a sixteen-year-old boy walks into his teacher's classroom to talk about a grade. They have an argument. He ends up beating her up, tying her up, and raping her. Janitor finds her in her closet. I think. Kids in going kids in jail right now on five hundred thousand dollar bail. And you got, you got, and hold on, to all you little stupid ass kids out here, and I don't have a problem saying this, I'm jumping off the porch, just to let you know. All you little stupid ass kids out here advocating, like, oh, you need to free him, do this, do that, and cheering for him and shit. Um, I live in data teacher. Damn. I kill one of you little fucking motherfuckers, bro. That is nuts. You ain't got to worry about going to jail. You ain't got to worry about half a million dollar bail. Fam. I'm doing something to you. I'm going to go find some of the biggest, burliest. Those niggas need to go hire Joe Clark, my nigga. Homosexuals. Relax. To rape the shit. Relax. We can't promote that at all. I feel you. Hold on. To get out of you. Okay? I'm going to find some big, fresh out of prisons to... Like on uh, Godfather of Harlem, dude wouldn't talk. Mm-hmm. 
Well, man, keep fucking up. <laughs> We're going to go go get Big Willie. Yeah. I got shit to do. My dad was a CEO. The biggest. That nigga was like, man, who the fuck is Big Willie, mm-hmm. man? Yeah. And they brought this big ass black dude in there. And nigga was like, take it home, Billy. All you heard was zip. zip. Ah. Like, yeah, nigga. When my, dad was a, when my dad was a CEO, rest in peace, pops. Um, there was a nigga in there. His name is Big Pretty. He's that big, big 300 something pounds all muscle 6'6 six, six. dad said if he wanted you that was a problem <laughs> fuck big pretty's ass up nigga I'm dying nigga <laughs> the day yeah. he came for me I'm dying nigga either I'm dying or he gonna come to understand I'm gonna fuck you up badly before this nigga <laughs> nigga yeah I don't wanna go bro what would you do I don't want to go there. Right. Six, 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 350, all muscle. For my manhood? Yeah, I'm killing you. Toss his ass around like a rag doll, nigga. <laughs> Fuck you, man. So I'm the strongest nigga in the world that Hell day. Yeah. <laughs> he said, fear, well, str- straight fear strength, nigga. But, dog, that's crazy. That's ga- eye gouge feet. That's eye gouge fights, nigga. I'm. T- I'm trying to take your eyes, nigga. I'm going to grab your cheeks, try to rip your fucking jaw open. I nigga. remember playing <laughs> with my boy, Kurt. Probably like a year or two before he went to the league. We played, but we, we slap box. We start slap box. That's the baseball player that almost took your fucking, uh, your head no, off no, of no, the no, bat. No. No. no, that's my boy, Randy. Okay. Kurt used to go to UNR. Uh, he played in the league for a little bit. Schneider? Yeah. Okay. So. No, I thought you were talking about. Man, we Shout get out to, to Kurt Schneider. We get to talk of trash. Right. Hey, ass, what up, boy? We get talking trash, and I'm, you know, I'm like, nigga, what up, nigga? I'll whoop y'all. Dog, and one thing I realized, like, this nigga 6'8". I wasn't thinking like that. I was like, nigga, whatever. We trying to slap box. But, bro, when I say he, he was, like, over there. His arms, huh? Was still, like, slapping at my face. Like, yeah, like, you bro. still have I remember like, that, like, had a profound effect on me, and I was just like, oh, if a nigga's over a certain length, he's getting shot. <laughs> <laughs> like I'm, I'm not I'm not about to This was never designed For us to have a fight No Cause that nigga gonna be Hey bro We're not in the same distance. weight class Right You know what I'm saying Like How the fuck are you That far away from me Nigga touching my cheek Pause And I can't even Get to you Nigga I'm, Oh shit Like nigga, Every time I, you get And they slow when I see him you know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. Like, I remember thinking that, like, damn, bro. He was like, don't, don't trip. I beat everybody on slap boxing in the back home. I'm like, nigga, I bet your ass, long. too. Yeah. Well, with somebody that big. Yeah, you, you got to be like a real the, boxer coming the there. Thing. Like, yeah, you got to come in and Your head movements yeah. got to be enough, and you got to be willing to take one, just in case. Because you might eat, too. Just to uh, get your nigga, you might. Uh, God damn, nigga. You're going to eat a couple trying to catch the timing of it. That's what it's going to be. You gonna be ah, okay? That's why I think certain fighters could dominate in the, in the UFC. Oh, for sure. Mayweather would dominate UFC if you didn't take him to the ground. But the thing is, it's gonna be so hard to shoot in on him. Yeah. And not damn near get your ass put to sleep, or at least like. Cause look at his footwork. Or at least in the deterred ring. to not do it again for a minute. Well, yeah, cause you gotta think about the footwork in the ring. You shooting at him, he's gonna back up and. Eh, eh, eh. Yeah, he, and he's going to time it every time like a fucking... Here's what I equate Mayweather's eye coordination to a great home run hitting baseball player. Not not home run hitting, a great batting average baseball player. Okay. Because they're honing okay. in on that ball. They're watch, If you watch a baseball player, they watch it to the mitt. Right. And that's how Mayweather fights. He's watching your head. Nigga, every, everywhere your head go. Nigga. Taking data. He's watching, nigga. He's moving. If you see Mayweather's shoulders move, it's usually with a nigga's head movement. And nigga, here come that jab. Bink. There's that jab. Okay. Yep. Oh, that right's open. Hold on. Straight right. Nigga, eat that one. Mm-hmm. Nigga. That's why around that fifth, sixth round. Oh, he's fucking you he up. He got your shit down to a key, and now he just used eating counters. Yeah. Nigga, oh. Fucking I just see niggas just frustrated because you could tell, like, he ain't punching me, like, hard. He's just hitting me every time he throws a fucking punch. 
and now it's I can't not missing, see right? Because it keeps hitting the same eye yeah. you know, over and over and over. Again. Or you can't see because he's peppering your ass every time, every time you think you see something. This nigga's closing pop. your eyes, nigga. Oh, like God oh, damn, oh, so stop. Start, start like pop shotting, nigga. Like I, we've seen Mayweather Mayth- Mayth- hit a nigga with two jabs and watch him all. We've seen many people do this. <sighs> <laughs> that just frustration Like nigga Stop hitting me bro I didn't even see that shit coming That nigga Berto said after the fight Like I said man it's trajectory uh, he, He'd be in my face And straight, then he's gone straight, straight jab And then he's all the way at the it's middle He's gone He said we in the corner folks. Yeah He said this nigga jab me in my face I look up nigga, This nigga's all the way in the middle of the ring you know how like, nigga with the high guard. Nigga, like, come get it. You know who's had the greatest footwork to me, though? That's crazy. Tyson. Because Tyson, you niggas weren't watching. Tyson was shifting southpaw during punches. Yeah, so Tyson, I remember. When, yeah, he, yeah. when he hit to the body, Tyson would be conventional. But when he'd shift, nigga, bing. Bop, 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 nigga, bop. That was his thing. Nigga, he would shift. He's the only nigga to do that, bro. So he's in front of you, and that's like that Mayweather. She's in front of you, and all of a sudden he's over here, nigga. Uppercut, nigga. It's through your guard. I oh, know. Earl, <laughs> Earl Spence does that, uh, yeah. and uh, Terrence Crawford brings a little bit of that to his game too. No, but Tyson did yeah. it like in split seconds. Yeah, I know. Yeah. Like during a combo, he hits you conventional, Bing Bing, switch southpaw, Bing Bow, going mm. to sleep, nigga. Didn't even see it coming because he done switched his fucking his, his where, stance where do you, on Where it. do you rank Tyson all time? Mm. Number four. Because mm. I take in consideration, I okay. don't feel like the Buster Douglas fight was really a knockout. What do you mean? Nigga, Buster Douglas should have lost that fight already by the time he... Okay, Buster Douglas knocked yeah, Tyson out. that happened to Tyson Fury. Let me say him. this. Buster Douglas knocked Tyson out. Okay. He did. Nigga, Tyson didn't get up in the count. There was no, no debating that. Right. But Buster Douglas was down for 14 to 15 seconds. He was, and that's part of the reason now the nigga who hits the thing keeps count at the same time. That was part of the reason that's even because now if you pay attention to boxing and we heard it when there was no crowd, nigga, the the refs trying to get in the corner. There's you hear still hear nigga one, two. It's cause nigga the so the ref can make niggas move, and somebody still yeah. keeping track of time. That Tyson Fury thing, it was weird. It just wasn't. Yeah, it was. You know why I say that. Yeah. Because I think it was bad luck. Fury I think was down for a good 12 those seconds, fights, bro. You could be the GOAT or the champion. Just but that look quick. where the fight was at. Fight was overseas, wasn't it? Sure was. You're talking about the second fight, right? Or was it the first fight he was down like that? It was the first fight, right? When he was down for hella long. I'm trying. Yeah. I think they might have both been in Vegas, bro. I, ain't gonna lie. I know one of them was out the country. Might have been number three. Yeah. Stable Center. You're right. It was in America. Oh, okay. Um, yeah, it was a long count. But that Buster Doug is a blatant long count. Let's get. Let me go further. What? Nigga had to go to jail, go to prison over some fake rape shit. So I don't really feel like it happened. Okay. Um, that nigga, that's a, you can't do that to somebody as a fighter. You really can't do that to somebody athletic period. Somehow Michael Vick was just a fucking phenom to get out of prison after, what did he do, five years? Yeah. And then came back and was killing it still. Yeah, niggas forget my nigga sat it down. Sat it down, bro. And then came back and killed it. A lot of people can't do that. Tyson was supposed to fight Holyfield after the Douglas fight. I feel like that Tyson would have murdered Holyfield. Would have beat that boy yeah. ass. Would have beat Lewis's ass back then. Those two mega fights you gave him at the end of his career when That's Tyson wasn't 
Tyson though, right? That's that Don King bullshit. Yeah. Don King started and that, and Bob they, Arum they fill you up with a bunch yeah. of cups, uh, tomato cans. Yep, and then sprinkle a good person mm-hmm. here and there, and then try to put their belt. They didn't sprinkle nobody good yeah. in Tyson up leading up to fucking what you call it, nigga. It was yeah. all tin cans until he fought Holyfield and until he fought Lennox Lewis, bro. But had both of them fought Tyson in his prime when they were supposed to, no rape charge. Nigga, they got their ass beat the fuck up. They know that. Yeah. They glad they got those fights when oh, they got explosion. those fights. Yeah. And when Come he was on, more disciplined and shit. Like, yeah. When you weren't knocking him out. Yeah. When that chin wasn't, you weren't touching that chin. No. That head movement was too much. Nigga, he would have beat the shit out of both. First of all, then it's a little too slow. Too big, too slow. Too slow. Nigga, Tyson's going to see your punches I and dodge them Lennox all Lewis day. Like ever. That, man. I never liked Lennox Lewis, bro. Yeah, I never liked he him skated much. by his whole career. He fought everybody after he was supposed to. Yeah, there's a blueprint for that. So and then look, the nigga who beat his ass, Vitaly Klitschko, who got stopped only because of a cut, the nigga retired this nigga because he was beating his motherfucking ass, nigga. Yeah. Retired him. Uh, no mas. I don't want to fight you again. I don't want that Klitschko no I more. Think that like. Like, bro, fuck. Le- I hate. I've always not liked Lennox Lewis. Fuck Lennox Lewis. I never really liked Holyfield, but it ain't fuck Holyfield. It's Holyfield, you know what I'm saying? Holyfield came from the fucking mud, That's and he's FBA, my nigga. That's a fact. So you know what I'm saying? Lennox Lewis ain't part of this culture and this struggle. At the end of the day, Lennox Lewis is a fucking Brit or an Englishman. Right. Power to him too. Not a problem, but I'm just saying. You know what I'm saying? No, I get you. I just don't like. I never like. He's just air. He was an arrogant ass nigga, like somebody from Britain or London, my nigga. And he didn't fight yeah. everyone like that. No, like, not at all. Yeah, man. But Tyson's number four because I, I take. I'm just taking everything into consideration with that man. Fifty fights, six losses, too. It's not a bad record, my nigga. And you're talking how many knockouts, my nigga? Like, I think it was like 42 knockouts. Damn. No, matter of fact, let me check Tyson's record. I think it might be all knockouts, nigga. I don't know if he ever went the distance and won. I would like to see if Tyson ever went the distance. He has. He lost. Yeah, yeah. No, Lewis knocked him out. Um, Holyfield. No, Holyfield knocked him out. Who did he go the distance with? I have no clue. I have no clue. No clue. 50, 50, he's 56 and 2. 50 uh, wins, 6 losses, 2 no contest. 44 Shit. knockouts, my nigga. That means 6 fights with the distance. The ones he lost went the distance. And it makes sense. <laughs> now it makes hella sense, nigga. You you weren't even ready for those. Like, <laughs> like you been knocking niggas out in thirty seven seconds and shit. But forty straight. That's times. not that's not top five Hall of Fame record. I think it gotta be, bro. Fifty and six, forty four knockouts. Well, come on, bro. I think like May. If you're gonna give Mayweather Chavez number one, or has like seventy two. But nigga, Julio Cesar Chavez, a lot of them fights. I don't know. Really, you can't really count those, bro. Because when he started fighting them real fights, he wasn't. That's how I feel about a lot of people. Sugar Ray Roberts. And yeah. All the people like that. Yeah, well, people who have that many wins and shit, they're not. They don't they were, get on. They were dominant. You know what I mean? That's so funny. <laughs> but yeah, man, no. So, uh, how many, well, we don't got to go into all that. I was going to say, how many Hall of Famers did he beat? How many world champions? But, how many Hall of Famers did Tyson beat? Yeah, but. Larry Holmes, Spinks. Um, nigga, everybody beat on his way to his championship as a Hall of Famer. Who did Lennox Lewis fight that was a Hall of Famer? Holyfield? Tyson? <laughs> Evander fought, I think, fought more Hall of Famers. 
Hmm. Let's see. I'm gonna go look at his his record. Oh, thank. Drive for me. Uh, yeah, man, it might be an argument for that. Mm-hmm. Might be an argument. Let's see where it is. I still can't believe that Buster Douglas fire shit pisses me off. Perfect storm. Perfect fucking storm. Yeah, Somebody riding that wave feeling like he's unfucking touchable. Got his ass attached. And, and you know they said that uh, STD. Nigga yeah. was burning the whole time. Yeah. I don't know if you've ever had one, but I don't think I could box full on burn. I'm just gonna assume I couldn't. <laughs> like, now do you really want to? Nah. You have to postpone that. But you can't. It's too much money. Niggas have spent all that money to take it to another country. That country spent like sixty million just to get the bid there. <laughs> yeah, that's bad. <clears throat> so nah, you gotta do it. And Don King's your fucking promoter. And your manager. You know, damn well he don't care that your dick on fire. Nah. He gonna tell you you shouldn't have been fucking them bitches without no ro- nigga. You know what this is over here, just, just free falling these bitches. Like, oh, you in here, you in here blocking jabs, but you didn't want to. Yeah, right. Okay. <laughs> okay. Blocking jabs, but ain't blocked that STD. Yeah, that'd be bad. That'd be bad, bro. Right. Let's see. Um, what's that have we been? We've been back next already on in a week. We're going to keep this uh, Wiz Gilly shit up, though, and see what's going on with that. Y'all check it out, man. Be cool. Y'all PA legends. Right. You know? And Wiz is on some whole ninja shit now. Mm-hmm. Wiz might put around fuck Gilly blue ass. I up. don't know. Gilly be up in the gym boxing. We seen him on his little... We always say in a street fight, who going to win, the boxer or the more tight type person? Ooh, we'll that's see. A good one, yeah. We'll see. Do a celebrity match. Right. That's big right now. That's a bag right there. And he got Barstool Sports behind him. Mm-hmm. That's a bag. Man, I am nice. This nigga. We Man. good? I'm good. That's another episode of the Always, Always Talking, Talking Shit Podcast. Boy, Doc on. Peace. Fuck how you feel. Well, fuck you. New Always Talking Shit Show. Oh.